George attacked you on Twitter this week. I spoke to him on the phone after. Oh, Fuck, this look. is the garbage content that I'm talking about. Nah, bro, Not you're, a you're out of Yo. touch. He used to be out on the corner. He was dealing in drugs. Got himself a barber's chair and gave us some cuts. Now he's a podcaster. His life, he'll talk about it with us. And now it's Jeff yeah, we're back with another all-male episode of Jeff FM. <laughs> That's not the sit red intro. We're, it's a little rocky over here. Oscar's back. We got rid of that white person in the bathroom along with that other white person. So where does that kid go back to? Too many that? whites around here, yeah. man. Get rid of them. Diversity. Too many whites. Where does the Amish kid go to? Back to Pennsylvania? No, he's just filming Tana's show today. Look, we're branching out. We're doing a lot of other stuff in business. We got a lot of things going on, but today we're going to be diving in. We got Mike back here. We're going to be talking about his beef with George, him getting roasted on Twitter by George, him getting roasted on Twitter that, by Andrew Tate. No, I don't we're gonna think be we're talking, talking about, about any of that We're so. going to be diving into that. Uh, we're also going to be talking about my marathon this week, a New York City marathon I will be competing in against Casey Neistat, Cody Co. Tons of other runners, 50,000 people out in New York City. I'm anxious for it, but I'm excited. Life is good over here. We got the new set rocking. It looks great, by the way. Thank I just want to. I just want to go on record as to say it looks. It looks beautiful. I love the the aesthetic of it. Aesthetic of it. It's not as bright. It used to feel like. You know what they felt like probably when they saw the first nuclear explosion test, like all the scientists there, like Oppenheimer type shit. That's what the old studio felt like. Just too bright, too much light. Yeah. Too, it's like where Kyle needs to be to get a tan. Yeah. Like he probably, that's, he looks whiter in here. Bro, take your shirt off. <laughs> oh. Take your shirt off. Damn. You know what that's like? It's like spider in uh, Goodfellas. What's that supposed to mean? Take it off. Why? Why are you saying I need to be in front of the sun to get a tan? What are you trying to say about my shirt? What are you trying to say about me? Just you're a little pale. Why are you like body shaming me, bro? I just I'm not. But what do you you just what do you mean? Yo, I was I was I was tan shaming you. You shoot him. Me. Pull out a well, gun. Yeah, I, gotta, gotta, I, I gotta double down back on you. Teach That's him a lesson. Works. You're gonna let him talk to you like that? Fuck no. No, I'm, he's no, talking, I'm talking to me. To you. Oh. I'm talking to you, Mike. You're gonna let this young kid talk to you like that? I like Kyle a lot. Well, make an example out of him nah, right I'm now. I'm not doing that. I, 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 right now, what you're seeing in real time, people, is the de-escalation of conflict and how a conflict should be dealt with. Kyle, that was actually... I shouldn't have said that, too, and I, that's I take some, it back. That's some bitch-ass well, attitude. Well, guess though, what? That's where I'm going to stick doing, with. You've been doing... Like, why, do you, why do you get into these conflicts and then back out like what that? What do you mean? <laughs> I did not. I, I made a joke. I didn't know that it was going to turn into such a terrible thing where we were just about to get into like a major war with each other where we said things that couldn't be taken back. Mm. I think once you notice that joke are starting to turn into real, you know, scenarios. Cut back. Yeah, you just gotta t cut back nah, a little bit. I dive in deeper. I double down. Well, that's and what separates me from you. I'm a lover. You're a scumbag. But let's talk about it because you've been getting into a lot of stuff. You go on Twitter. You have these opinions. Sorry, you put out your opinions. Oh, Not enough apologizing. This is what is this bitch ass? What do you, shit? But what do you mean by the shirt though? I what? Just because no, you call no, me fat? No. Because I'll do no. it. I don't care. No, I didn't I'm, eat I'm, very. I clean gotta too. respect my elders. I'm sorry. That's right, Kyle. That's that's nice. You know. All right, fair. It's beef squashed, but look. Well, no, because he just threw a little digging at the... <laughs> beef squashed. But, Mike, you go on Twitter. You've been beefing with everybody. You put out the other day, my life's harder than everybody's. I'm depressed, all this shit. I, mental health is a real thing. And then Andrew Tate's like, yo, there's crazy wars going on and stuff right now. Shut up or something. But no, no offense. <laughs> he was like, I'm saying this with love. Yeah. I guess that's kind of nice, right? Tate just responding to your tweets. You know, what do you, what do you want me to, I don't care about any of this. <laughs> I really don't. I'm sorry. I have to be like, I go on Twitter and I just say shit. And if I don't like what I said two minutes later, I just delete it. Yeah. Like I just, I use Twitter as like a, a like a trampoline park to just go bounce around new ideas and just see what happens. I didn't say anything about mental health. I just said, I'm, I'm, I'm trying transcranial magnetic stimulation, which we should talk about a little bit today as a, as a therapeutic approach. And that's what you just came from. Yeah. You had all those magnets on it. your head when you FaceTime me. Yeah. Do you have a, a picture a, of it, of you doing it? No, I'll send it in. You can put it on the screen. Yeah, but it's, it. but it's, it, you know, it's a therapeutic approach. When I talk about mental illness and mental health, which for the people that want to hear about it. Are, those are the people I'm talking to. I don't give a fuck what, what anybody else thinks about it. I'm talking to the people that want to hear about this stuff, the people that struggle with that stuff. Yeah. So when the rest of the community, you know, says like, oh, it's not real, it's a mindset thing, this, blah, blah, that, and the other, it doesn't matter because that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking to people that can relate and understand it. So I tried this new approach. 
And I wasn't, there was no even complaint about my life or any of this stuff. I was just saying, yo, this is what I'm trying and I'm going to let you guys know if it works or not. And he came in, yeah. He came right at you. Bro, it's not, you know, mental, you're only, uh, you know, your mind is weak because you yeah. say it is type stuff. And I'm, I get, I get well, that I there's wanna, those people that don't have any mental issues and they can talk about it. You're just weak and all that stuff. I get that there, there's those types of people. Cool. But in all fairness, right now it is a tough time to be talking about anything that's going it's on. Always it's, a just, tough, yeah. it's always a tough time. I don't give a fuck. I don't yeah. care. I don't care, dude. The prevalence of a conflict in one part of the world, which, which sure is dramatically, dramatically, dramatically more, uh, uh, affecting of people in a, in a real way. If you are if you are in Gaza right now, your life is is dramatically affected by what's going on over there. And even is, Hamzat, Hamzat, the baddest fucking evil villain. He went in the octagon and he was like, I could I could then even fight. It was just you know these kids and stuff. You know, like even Hamzat uh, yes. turned into into a a saint, an angel. It's, but to but to say that that then discounts every other single struggle in the world to me is 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 insane. I've I've talked about uh, the situation there. I've said I'm a lover of Israelis. I'm a, a lover of Palestinians. I'm a lover of humans, and that this whole thing is terrible. But to, to then say that I can't talk about a new approach I'm I'm taking towards mental health because it's it it pales so deeply in comparison. So that's the only yeah, thing yeah, we can yeah, talk yeah, about. Yeah. No, no, no. It's fine. I was just messing around. You know. I was no, just, no. But it's it. it Someone said it. It wasn't you. But isn't that crazy that Hamza went from his last uh, post-fight speech was like, ah, I kill everybody, I kill everybody. And now this one, he was like, save the kids, no no war. You know? It's a yeah. cool arc for him. It's cool. I like it. a lot of stuff going on in fighting. Uh, Tyson Fury, Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou will be here shortly. He's downstairs with Steven right now. <laughs> He's coming. He's he coming. He's told me that. I thought you were serious. He's coming up the elevator. <laughs> Imagine Francis. We did have him on the barbershop that one time. I know that. But it was in the trailer. It was such a tough episode to do because he's so big and he was rocking that Airstream. And it was just so hot in there and he didn't get any of my jokes because of the language barrier. <laughs> but he might be the baddest dude on the planet I can't right now. I mean, I just can't believe what happened with that with that bow. And he was, he was clearly robbed, right? Like, yeah. Well, for those who don't know, the heavyweight... <laughs> MMA UFC champion Francis Ngannou, who we once had on the Barbershop show. That's what he's known for, that Barbershop episode mostly. And Tyson Fury, the heavyweight boxing and lineal champion. He's beaten everybody. They they spoke about him as the greatest boxer of all time. They had a fight, a boxing match, not, not a f MMA fight. They joined, they met in the boxing ring, the battle of the baddest big giant men. And I was going through all the betting sites trying to get like a betting account so I could throw every dollar I have to my name on, on Tyson, Tyson Fury, Fury. Yeah. to knock out <laughs> yeah. Francis. Cause I was like, no way he beat Deontay Wilder. He, who is a boxer and the hardest puncher, you know, he's going to crush Francis. It, it just, there's no chance. Luckily I can't bet from California. So I wasn't <laughs> able to place a bet. So I would have lost everything because yeah. I can't fucking believe it. Francis went in there and, and he beat up Tyson. Do you think, do you think Tyson Fury just underestimated his, his capability as a striker? For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think so. Because did even you watch the did you watch the documentary that Mike Tyson put out after? Mike Tyson put out a documentary after. Yeah, what's it about pigeons? No, about uh, training uh, Francis. But they only met up for like two days. That was all. Like, maybe they made it look like more. It's probably like what I did in the training series with like. I can't want to expose BP myself. Boys. BP boys, one week workout challenge, but Saudi Arabia is putting all. They're just or what is? Where is it? Um, that was this, in Abu. Wasn't it in Abu Dhabi? Or, yeah, no, or, Abu Dhabi. I, no, Abu Dhabi or is or the was UFC. It in Saudi. Oh, is it the last UFC? It's the start of the season. The oh Riyadh, Riyadh, season, Riyadh, season. Riyadh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. In Saudi. So yeah. Riyadh just has all this crazy, crazy. oil money. Whatever, so they're just paying everybody. I have another ten ten burger opening. There. See, they're even pumping money into your burgers. They yeah. just they're just fucking buying everything out. They paid yeah. every celebrity, every boxing champion. Did you see of who was at the fight? Was there? Yeah, everybody. everybody. Eminem, Kanye, Kim. They just said, "Yo, we want every." We're not. We're they paid Ronaldo. everybody. All right, real quick. This episode is sponsored by DoorDash. Love the convenience of getting what you want right to your door with DoorDash grocery delivery. You can stock up for the week or last minute cravings conveniently. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or we'll make it right. So sit back and enjoy quality groceries just like you picked them yourself. With easy substitutions right in the app and best in class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. 
Get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value and use code Jeff Grocery. That's code Jeff Grocery at checkout. Limited time offers, terms apply. That's 50% off up to a $20 value on your first order through DoorDash when you're to code Jeff Grocery. Don't forget that's code Jeff Grocery for 50% off your first order up to $20 when you try out DoorDash. All right, thank you, DoorDash, for sponsoring the show. Now let's get back on with it. There he is, Steven. Steven. Yeah. What up, bro? <laughs> Steven is back. What up, Steven? Where's Francis? Did he not? Francis? Did, yeah. Nagano, you're supposed to bring him up. You start without me. The hell? We didn't want to start. I didn't know when you were coming. I'm a big part of this show. I know that. I'm a I big know. deal. I know. I know. I hope you contribute a lot today. I hope you, you know, take, take, take over right now. Take a few minutes because I feel like we don't let you speak that much. Oh, right. I just rushed right into it, jumping right into it. I wasn't like, I had to, like, I was trying to prepare. What's going on in your life? How's things going? Be brutally honest. Be completely <laughs> transparent and just open up and talk about your feelings. That's what people like on the internet. They uh, relate to us. It's going good. Very, I'd say very casual. Very, like, the line's going like this right now. Not much going up, not much. You're flatly going. flatlined. Yeah, you could say I flatlined. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are? Coming in here with this fucking Brad Pitt, Leonardo DiCaprio attitude PR answers, what? telling us what what fucking uh, these that's safe the real truth. Answers. Like uh, nothing's going crazy, but nothing's like Mike I mean, just fu got fucking magnets put into his brain. He had a <laughs> fucking lobotomy thing because he's oh. sad and he wakes up depressed. <laughs> Wait, what? And he opened up about that. Uh, and you can't even you, come in here. I didn't and, even and, get to open up about you it. Depressed? He just rushed me through it. Why are you depressed? Mike's doing magnet therapy on his brain to cure his depression. The fuck is and then that? No, it's making not fun for of him about it. It's not for depression. I don't have Why are you depression. Depressed? No, I don't have depression. It's just a, one, a narrative that's been created by the host of this program. I have. I have, have you, you ever know, worked? No, I have. I have. I have a man up. Man up. I, I do. I, no, 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 no. But but on it. What? Since you brought it back up, <laughs> I go out for a jog. I do want to say this. His point is not one hundred percent wrong. We are we are at the whim of our of our mindset, and yeah. so simultaneously, while I'm using thera therapeutic approaches to try to lessen my anxiety, I'm also working on how I talk to myself and how I treat myself. It really is important. A Andrew's not completely wrong, dude. He's not. Yeah. The idea that mental illness is made up and there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. People are over prescribed. People are over diagnosed, but it definitely exists. Yeah. That's 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 true, but uh, but at the same let's time, let's get past I am, this because yeah. this is Sorry. where we lose yeah. Steven. A lot of good stuff going on. Um, that fucking kid got punched in the face at that Halloween party. I'm on that guy's side. No, you're I, not. I you're think, just saying that right now for laughs. I think he was in the right. No, you don't. You can't be a white kid dressed up like that and telling a black dude walk. No, you, walk down no, that you, fucking. No you, no, you can. It's freedom of speech. He was trying to punk him. He went over no, there and did you that. You can do that. It's freedom of speech. Yeah. You, what you can't do is punch someone in the face. What? You know, Jared, you can't do they, that. They came to Jared's party last night, and Jared didn't let him in. No. The whole entourage of IRL streamers. And I'm sorry. What did you just say? Jack and all them came to whose party? Jared's. J Rod had Ooh. your editor, had, Mike's editor, had a that, party I, that I paid you thousands and thousands of dollars to at a party last night. And he didn't invite me to it. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and your edits are late. That's well, why they're late. Like, and then texted like, me today it's asking more, me about more money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? Well, it's more about. It was more like a friendly. Like y'all are very business. You're more like business partners. You know, it's more of a business relationship. I would say. Yeah. The people that were there are more like you know, which is totally fine. That's. <laughs> so I had I had we didn't we didn't I wasn't even here last night. We, we, here last night. Not, I flew we, in late last night. They were trying to get in, and that big security guard was there, and I was like, "Don't let him in." Fuck that! And then Joe's like, "Yo, we're, we're all fucked up." And he's like, "Fucked up." What, what if he just cracked? They cracked everybody. Yeah, he just wiped out that. Oh, out. No, was, yeah, yeah. Fuck that. He's like an infantry unit by himself. Yeah, that dude's a that dude's a monster. He could have wiped out that whole party. I DM'd him. I was like, "Yo, that fucking shit was dope. I want to hang out with you, bro. Join the squad." Are you saying J Rod didn't let the security guy in? No, just the whole not the security guy, but he was there. But just like the the, the whole entourage. Well, I think the streamers is like new reality TV or something. Yeah. I don't know. They kind of have like a way of doing yeah. it where they keep it exciting and they just fuck with people in public. I hate it. You heard my situation where that kid. Should I tell that story about what happened? He was an IRL streamer. Yeah, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I was out a couple weeks or like a month ago now. I'm out at the store and this girl. She's like, "Oh, you're Jeff Wittick. Oh my God, I'm the girl that made the eye statue for David." <sighs> And I'm like, cool, like, oh yeah, that's great work. She was like, oh, I know, like I felt bad, like after I saw the comments, like I should have made it for you. All right, enough of this score, it's too much. Um, 
And as she's doing that, that whole interaction, her boyfriend pulls out the phone and starts filming me and like trying to troll me. He's doing like an IRL stream and or like filming a video to post after or some shit. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but he had his phone on me. So I got to be nice, you know, and now he starts going. So what is it like to have one eye and shit like that while his phone is fucking two inches away from my face? So I'm ready to snap now. But I'm keeping it cool because if you get mad on video, you lose. You know that. Of course. You know, you had that video where you're pushing that homeless kid's face or whatever. <laughs> and you were like, homeless, homeless <laughs> mentally ill. Yeah, remember poor, that? You and Logan were just slapping kid. the shit out of that. Dude, fucking... the, the way they, they turn that storyline into the saddest story, they're like, this poor, <laughs> mentally challenged, homeless kid had just gotten out of school and was trying to buy his mom a meal. He was like a paparazzi. <laughs> yeah. Like, he was a scumbag, bro. Paparazzi, they're doing talking shit shit yeah. and the way the internet creates yeah go <laughs> well no that's so so the kids fucking really really trying me so you know at the end i'm like i pull out my credit card so i'm like all right can you stop now my credit card's out and the people in the store they're like oh you guys aren't together you got like you got to stop you got to leave so they put him outside and now the kids filming from outside really trying to get a reaction Are out of streaming me. this like, like a live streamer just phone out i don't know what he's doing at this point but i know that he's going to film me walking out so i walk out i'm like all right nice meeting you guys and I don't think anything of it. I'm like a little pissed off, but I'm like, cool. It's fucking over with. I hear footsteps running up behind me. It's the kid. The fucking kid chased me down. I don't know what the fuck he's going to do. So I, at that point, I grab him, fucking grab the phone, about to fucking start blasting him with the phone because now he's really like coming to attack me. This is self-defense at this point. And now I got this phone in my hand and the kid pulls out pepper spray to try and fucking spray me. I haven't sprayed before, so I'm not trying to get sprayed again. That shit shuts you down completely. Yeah. You ever been pepper sprayed? No. I got the phone. I got the fucking video. I got it deleted, and then the kid was trying to pepper spray me, and I got to get out of there on, on foot. I got to use all my training. It felt really nice to use a little jujitsu fucking... And then just get out of there safely. Nobody was harmed, and it was nice. I actually got to teach one of those IRL streamers a lesson, and it was like... I think we need more people like that in the world because these people are a menace to society. They're going out and just fucking with people for their own personal gain and profit. What if Don't he had a huge security? you do that security. though sometimes? What if he had a huge security guard? Right? I would have smoked him too, but that's me. <laughs> that's me. That's not everybody else. Like that kid at that party, you know. Bro, you can't. You wouldn't have been able to do shit to that giant man. That giant man I would stab. I would You'd have, I would have, <laughs> no, have, you'd a, have to. You'd have to use physical. You'd have to use a weapon against him. But that's him. fair. Do you like know, me, you know, me, versus eight, that, me with a knife versus six. that guy, he's eight foot six. Eight foot the security guard. Eight foot six. That's his height. That's a, I could. That could be not the right statistic. Yeah, I don't, I don't is think is that wrong. He was massive. Ever met his hands. Foot. No, he used but, to be the baby security. Yeah, he was a security for a baby. And allegedly <laughs> has a body. But now, well, of course he has a body. Was he gonna be just a head? No, you it banana. And then the kids started DMing me all types of crazy shit after. <laughs> but it was just it was funny because when David got that statue, I didn't think anything of it. I was just trying to block it out. But now I see that there was some real like maliciousness behind it. They were trying to clown me. So it felt so good to get that victory over that and get out of that situation. But I think, you know, somebody was trying to come up on me and maybe, you know, they just got the wrong guy. Maybe this one situation was the wrong guy. But I see a lot of fights breaking out online now. Everything all over Twitter is just, just IRL streams of people, drama. people fighting. It's, it's a lot. It's and you me. asked me, you were like, yo... You didn't go to any Halloween parties? And I'm like, fuck no. I didn't go to any Halloween parties. And I feel great. I felt so, like, just happy just watching these videos of these stupid-ass parties of people all I drunk. I can't believe so much shit happened. I, was, I went to New York just because it seems to all be happening here. And there were so yeah. many, and there were so many parties. And it's like, why else do these people need these security guards? If not just so they can fuck with people until they react and then have the security guard beat them up. Like, there's no... Yeah, There's nobody right. out there like, yo, Jack Doherty, get him. Like, we got to get a picture with JD. Like, does, is that happening? You, they're like the shit at the They're like the shits at the parties, too. Like, everyone flocks to them. It's brother, insane brother, to brother, watch. It's brother. like magnets. <laughs> Everyone's just getting At them. what parties? At J-Rod's party? <laughs> yes, that would make sense. I'm talking about any other to, parties. No, they're any not. Unruly, no, they're not. Unruly, no, they're unruly, 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 no, they're not. No, yes, they're not. They no, they're not, bro. They're not. In they're his not world, shit in, his yes. in his world. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No, I don't think they're the shit. I'm just saying, in, in everyone's eyes at these bro. parties, everyone just flocks to them and like they just get. It's you just know like, what? He actually might be weird. right because the scene here is. I am. So, everyone wants to no, be clipped. No, 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 no. The scene. This is what we talk about. The scene here is so whack. Like, like there's, like there's no more like. There's no more any kind of like celebrity left here or any kind of like real meaningful mm. stuff. It's just that 
TikTok crowd. They just want to get in clips and, and be like, in, you know, involved in like yeah. all of that, the whole. I see like you think so. You're telling me this. It's so So they're out there. TikTok. They're out there. IRL streaming, the security guard beating up each other and like talking about pedophilia and all this stuff, right? And then if Theo Vaughn, I'm about to get up and just fucking and then hit the, you right now and, then and if, get a viral clip. That'd be no, dope, listen, right? If, I got, if, if we just started jumping, okay, Mike, because yeah. that's what the internet wants now. They I know, want I, that. I, I see what you mean. They Theo Vaughn like, shows, shows up, up or like, or like, I get or, it. or 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 I'm, I don't want to say Drake because obviously Drake is an obvious one, but like someone of real internet stature, someone that does real programming, right. shows up. They 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 stick with the streaming. Like the people at the party are just like, dude, put me in a clip of you punching each other. Yeah, I feel like, <laughs> like that's what happens. Pro- probably, yeah. I don't understand, bro. Getting out of touch. No, we're all. No, I'm old. old. No, no, no. It, listen, it's, it's listen, listen. It's mainstream now. Like, I, I'm old. Wouldn't? I'm old. Don't, t- d- bro. Feel free to clip this. I just don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Kai Sana. I get Kai Sana. I get that dude is a, that dude is a goat. That dude is a fucking goat. He's spending seven days in prison on a real set with a heavily produced Better stream. Team, yeah. People showing up. Chris Sean Rock, Rock and this person and Drewski's, Drewski's there one day. Yeah. Bro, this Kai Sana is a real, real, real goat. So the, just like basically, it, basically live is the new wave and we're IRL. falling behind. We're f- IRL. Yeah, like I, I kind of feel like I want to pick up a camera and be like, yo, I'm going to mow my lawn right now. Come with. Well, what if we just start making these podcasts live? Should we just do them live? So we're talking about. We could about- probably get a bag from Kick. Huh? <laughs> I'm just gonna fuck it. Go- I'm gonna say. get hooked Imagine on this shit. Imagine a live show in here, and like fucking, there's chaos going on. Yeah, it's a yeah, set. Yeah, and then that- we'll fucking hit Mike. We'll jump Mike on camera. That's and actually it's so smart. Live. It's, it's already so smart. Live, no bro. one's doing it. You we already can't have sets. Edit it out. You we already can't. have sets. You already have. No one has sets on kick. Talk like. about sex. Sets. Oh. Like on kick. I yeah. saw the kid uh, Jack because I was watching the clips about that whole situation, how it unfolded. And one thing he said was interesting to me because he was like, yo, you guys know, clip that, clip that right there, put it on TikTok, clip that, you know, I'm picking the best ones and I'm paying you guys. So it was that little thing that he said was like, that's his, that's their strategy. These kids, they just fucking flood the internet with clips of nonsense. I want to cry. Film nonsense all day long. You're going to make me cry. Well, I'm telling you a technique that might help you with your algorithms and stuff. I don't care. <laughs> Yo, clip this right I, now. Hey, you know I'm picking those best oh, clips that go viral. Oh, just say that? Yeah. Oh, okay. You guys out there yeah, watching, yeah. clip this right now. Yo, I'm picking the right best now. clips that do the best, and I'm sending money out to y'all. Should, yeah, who should, wants to get paid? Clip that right now. We should that. actually do a live stream uh, on Kick on the, for the barbershop. I think it's just that part of my cool. internal sadness right now is having, in one hand, I have a, a, a connection to a world that could have real tremendous meaning and value to the world. Like, I, like bro, I'm trying to get a call set up with, with Andrew Huberman from Stanford. Like this dude knows everything about about the brain, about mental health, about about sleep, physicality, uh, sleep. This dude's a, cold a, plunges, a real expert, intermittent in fasting, all of it, all the podcast. He topics, talks about all the, the biggest best. six tenets of of personal health and like the things that you could do to better your life. And these are these are tenets that are applicable to anybody out there who who wants to have a better life. And then I have one foot in that pond with the fifth vital, with with mental illness, with addiction, with with all those things. Then this other janky, fucked up, arthritic right ankle is stuck in a pond of like porn the stars, blue chew tablets. <laughs> oh, blue you know, chew! They're sponsoring today's them. show. No, no, no. Actually, fuck that. I'll put that in the left bucket because that, that's great. Can yeah. we talk about blue yeah. chew for a second? Because let me do uh, that. Here, I'll do it. Actually, let me yeah, do it. Here, hold on. Let me reach in my pocket right here. <laughs> let me do it, guys. Today's video is. Oh, <laughs> you I have one on it. you. Yeah, I already used it. This video today is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, Blue Chew is an online men's health company that you can fill out a questionnaire and get access to Tadalafil and Sildenafil tablets with no trip to the pharmacy, no waiting in line, and no awkward doctor visits. No awkward, you know, hey, I need pills for my dick. With Blue Chew, you have access to tablets that will give you stronger, longer lasting erections in a chewable format. So if you don't like swallowing pills, you can chew them. And the, the package is small enough that it fits right in your pocket. So if you feel things heating up at a Halloween party in Los Angeles, you can pop that thing in and be ready to go. It's a secret weapon. It gives you confidence. It gives you everything you need to perform like Mike. Oh, so- Steven's actually taking one right now. Take it. Can you take one right now? <laughs> wait, how, wait what size? What's what size? <laughs> 30 30 oh yeah that'll get you going go to bluechew.com and use code Wittick. thank you bluechew for sponsoring this episode now let's get back on with it you get a new lava lamp i did get a new lava lamp steven yes and that looks like the same lava lamp that you copied off the zane and heath show that's funny you bring that up they did copy our set identical but it, it's probably a coincidence <laughs> but it it's just funny that it worked out that this set floods same we build time. a new one 
and then they just happen to redo i only know because people fucking send me it but yeah. yeah it's funny that you brought that up yeah they copied us straight up but you know <laughs> we're fucking bam 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 we're killing all the we're trendsetters <laughs> we we make the we fucking pave the road that you guys walk on you know we fucking write the the fucking rule book of this game last week you might you know this story i was driving around in my Range Rover, bro, right? Yeah. It's like 2.15 in the morning. I have been at uh, Ricky Banks. Remember Banks? Yeah. He had a birthday party, bro. No and way. It, yeah, it was in Malibu. Evidently, he's, he's still alive. And uh, he had this birthday party, and I was driving home after, and I was I was at a red light. It was like 2.15 in the morning, and I was listening to my tunes, just kind of chilling out at the light. Like, you know those late night drives where you're just like kicking it? Yeah. You know? Those are nice. Uh, I, I do them sometimes by myself. I was so content in that moment. Like, in that moment, I had no anxiety. I didn't need a magnet. I was good. And I... The light, I listen to Midnight Rider. Yeah, stuff like that. You know that song? Or like, I listen to... Yeah. Let me just give a little snippet while you, while you tell the story. I... Well, are you ready for the climax? Yeah. I thought that was the climax. You were like saying you were really relaxed. The light turned green. I pushed the gas. And slowly, because I was moving slow because it was late at night. And... <laughs> yeah. All right, enough. enough. I felt... Was what it a royalty-free version of Midnight Rider? Just can you say the story? <laughs> I, oh my god! Well, you know, oh my god. Well, you know how hard it is to tell a on. story on the show. Yeah, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's fucking impossible. It is. Bro. So and you got fucking smacked. I got smacked, bro, <laughs> by Wait, a what? by a fucking uh, oh, Honda yeah. Civic, bro. Right? It just. I mean, dude, like I was in the zone chilling, and it felt like a like a nuke. A went Chinese off. missile hit. Yeah, you? like an ICBM hit me from <laughs> shot from Shanghai, right, dude? Just kabow, dude. That's the sound I made. Kabow. Did anyone get seriously injured? Or? Bro, my car, I, like, I, takes me a second to realize what just happened. I look at the front of my car; it doesn't exist. It, my car now is, it, it's like it ends where I can, like, right where I am. That poor There's Range no Rover. Like you love that Range Rover. Like well, this. that gone, dude. You're just from the side. Yeah, with the side of their car yeah and 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 that car meant a lot to me because you know i was doing the math today i've, I've made a good amount of money in this industry i've worked very hard for a long time and that was really one of the only things i bought logan bought oh oh you bought that my bad Damn, i thought what did you... logan get you oh the girlfriend at the time yes he bought me a girlfriend so <laughs> so so i pull up and i pull over on the on the right side of the road and this woman pulls up in a in an Uber. This this wonderful Mexican woman pulls up in an Uber, and she's like, "Get the plates, get the plates." Yeah. And I was like, "Lady, <laughs> why do I have to rush to get the plates? I'm making sure that I'm not seriously injured." And so she gets out of the car and gets the plates. And right as she does it, the car drives off. Meow. The car dips. Meow. It's gone. Hit and run. Hit and run. And my car's just demolished. So I call the cops. Nine one one. Help! I've been involved in a traumatic serious injury i don't know if there's injuries it's bad the car can we guess the description the, of the driver the car took off they are gone can we steven guess the, describe the driver by only guessing the honda what he looks like a honda civic a honda civic was uh, he drunk it was a woman i don't know i didn't see the people you you can guess but there'll be asian no answer woman. like it's like it's it would be like answering a trivia. asian woman you said uh, it was two fifteen in the morning asian. in hollywood i mean i I thought you said it was a Hispanic male. Drunk. I just, I just, like I, I said, I've never saw the person, so we can guess is I, like, I it could have been that plant driving the car. Did you get the I plates? I don't know. Yeah, so yes, yeah, she took the f the plates, and I, you know, I have to say this to you, just to double down, especially with the magnet with the magnets as well. It is impossible to tell a linear story on the show, and it always has been. And maybe that's You're what makes it. No, you no, 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 off no, on, it, like, no, no, no. Let me let me explain stories. something to you. I write. I wrote a book. Okay, hundreds of pages where one story would take up. You would read one one story for three hours. Real detailed storytelling that is now missing from this shit environment that we call the internet. This Bro, is the garbage. Are, no, this look, is the garbage dude. fucking content that I'm talking about. I'm setting up a mood, creating a, a story that you can feel. Nah, bro, you're, not a you're out of Yo, touch. So we're the young, day, we're fucking young as fuck over here. The other day I got in a car accident. It sucked. Next topic. Yo, Jack Doherty, security guard. Next topic. We gotta topic. keep things Francis moving, Nagano. yeah. Next topic. We gotta keep I'm things moving. I'm telling a fucking story. Let me tell the fucking story. See, this is where the guys come in and fucking hit him, and that's our viral clip, you know? That's what the kids want to see, just violence. They want to see things moving along quick, and we're fucking doing our thing. We're young. Dude, we're fucking this is how we roll, bro. Yeah. You know, you're doing we're good. Young. Do you know there's an we're island so called young. the North Sentinel, Sentinel Island? island. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, there's a guy that I just saw on Instagram. I don't know if it's real, but the guy traveled to every single country in the world. 
I no, thirty three. They faked real. that at North Central East Island. That that was not. But that's not same apparently island. it's not owned by like he all of the. Mm, I'm not gonna, every country. I don't think the uh, North Sentinel. Uh, yeah, every continent. Continent. I don't think the North Sentinel Island is a continent. It's just it an has area. to it's belong to some continent. No, I don't it's think in the it's, Indian Ocean. It's not belong to anyone, right? I believe it belongs to the North Sentinel East. I would assume. And look, let's leave those people alone. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody should be going over there. Watch Jack Doherty go fucking live with his them. security guards. <laughs> yeah, oh imagine security he brings guards them. just <laughs> locking people, bro. Spears, they're throwing spears and at they're bouncing. Them. They don't touch them because he's eight off them. foot six. Uh, did you see the? Did you see Joe Rogan shot a arrow at a cyber truck. at the cyber truck? I watched that. It'll whole... just bounce off like that. Just yeah. Yeah. How do you think Elon? Lo- how do you think Elon looks? He wasn't. What ready. do you mean? Look. Well, Elon has a made-up mental illness. He, what do you mean? He's depressed. He has depression. No, he's artistic. Oh, as oh as... God! Are we going to have to start the first show in the new studio? With, I look. I want to apologize. <laughs> I want to apologize for. He's an artist. What are you guys talking about? It's crazy. Yeah, that interview last night. I watched that one with Elon. <laughs> he's and acoustic. It's, it's fucking cringe hearing Elon talk about fighting. Like the rest of the thing, the whole episode was good, but hearing him be like, "Y'all yeah, fight." Uh, Zuckerberg anytime any place and like bro we know you backed out saying you were waiting to get the Coliseum to fight in yeah. you know like Zuck's training Zuck was like come to my backyard right now it's so funny seeing these the two richest guys just have such an immature fucking petty ass beef <laughs> you know yeah and we're all the same training Zuck we're all the same you know I want to fight my enemies just like the richest guys in the world want to just get in a fucking backyard octagon and no only Zuck it. wants to Elon doesn't want to yeah but Joe Rogan because he knows everything about fighting Joe you know he's like the best guy to talk to about fighting he's now like interviewing Elon like are you serious about this do you really want to do it and that little nerdy fucking like kid inside of Elon is like yeah like um he's like yeah I went to his house like it's like three miles from Tesla HQ yeah in Palo Alto He's like, I could just lay on him, and he won't be able to move. And Joe's like, I don't know about that, you know? He's like, it was just funny to see Joe, like, realizing that this fucking multi-billionaire richest guy in the world is lying to him about being tough, you know? It was cool to see. Well, maybe he could lay on him. Could you imagine, like, from a girl's point of view, having sex with Elon, his butt naked <laughs> body on top of you? Ooh. Ooh, that's scary. It's like a, a, would you be able to get through that for ten million dollars? Can you look up naked Mr. Krabs? Would you Oscar? let this is what I imagine? Would you let would be Elon like, for penetrate help? you for ten mil? Yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> that's a I, sick I thought story. you were gonna say no. When it, what? Like, yeah, that's a sick story to tell. Story <laughs> <laughs> not even by for the Elon money for not ten even. million dollars. My, so not not I shouldn't say molested. I got I has. Got penetrated by Elon for ten million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> you might even be able to get a trip to space off that. You know, that's I mean, not the same right? body shape as him. No, Elon's, it's Elon's, kind of wrinkly, Elon's, kind of like that, no, and like pink. No, He's very pink. Elon's, Elon's trapezoidal or pale. Yeah, but just like I don't know, he's just like mushy. You know, kind of reminds me of. No, but he's, his body shape is like a rhombus. He's like, got see that, that top left one? <laughs> he's got Kyle's skin. It's Kyle's sure. skin. He's got Kyle's skin on my body. Kyle's skin. Sorry for body shaming Kyle. Sorry, I know he, he went through uh, that in the beginning. He, we, no, we skin shamed him. I know. He body shamed me. By Isn't skin shaming racism? Sh- it's racism. No, it's not. Skin shaming. So uh, racism not unless dry, episode. unless dry skin or pale skin is a. Listen. So I was thinking about this the other race. night with all this Elon stuff and Stephen getting nailed by him and if what he could <laughs> wager in that. And you know, there's people in space right now. I looked up. I was just like, Hey Siri, are there people in space right now? And there's a website that comes up and it says, Yes, there are ten people in space right now. Yeah, and you could see. Space Station. Yeah, the international. Well, person. well, only two of them are from the U.S. The rest are China, Russia. Yeah, but they're all together. They're, are they hanging out together? No, actually, they're at the ISS. But they have different units, they're right? Like different. Uh, no, they're all together, and they, they all have, they have down to the pods, second like, how long they've been in space, and it's tick. It's like a ticker. It's pretty cool. So imagine Stephen gets up there from getting fucking <laughs> nailed by Elon, and he's one of them up on that website. That'd be so sick. You're right. The story is better than the ten mil. Because yeah. just all that <laughs> shit that you could get out of it, <laughs> it would be so funny. Yeah, you get a lot of press. Yeah. You get a ton of press. You get that TMZ. You get what? Yeah. TikTok followers. Go Dude, why up. don't you? I would, I, I would take you in a Cybertruck over the 10 million. What? I would do 10 million. I do a Cybertruck. Like and a trip grand. to space. Cybertruck and a trip to space. That'd why don't so you DM sick. him and see if he's down? <laughs> I, mean, I could. I don't really know. Tweet at him. Yo, Elon, you want to fuck this ass? <laughs> I might have like that, like, invite only DMs, you know? 10 I don't know. Mil? <laughs> 
What does that deal with the, the invite only DM things on Instagram? Have you seen that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like a check mark or I try to DM Kane Kong, the security guard that punched that kid. I try to DM him and he don't accept DMs. I don't even know what I was going to ask him. Hey, how tall are you? <laughs> yeah, you want to hang out? You want to be friends? Wait, Mike, didn't you have Jack on Impulsive? Oh, yeah. Uh, saw, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. But I... Uh, I just I gotta I gotta say it again. I I would rather talk about uh, the makeup of this floor or that stool. I just I I can't. Yeah. You cannot ask me about this again. I, I'll walk. I will walk off the show. I got a topic for you that I you'd be hate, interested I hate in. This shit. No, you like this show better than no. The this show I love. Yeah. It, I, it, I want to bring it's another show. I can't, it's another show I can't of, tell stories. Well, on. go in on this topic. So you know how in America, like we tip people, right? Yeah. Like it's just a known thing. Like you're supposed to tip like yeah. 20% or whatever. Yeah. And then you go to other countries and they're like, what the fuck? No, you know, we don't tip. <laughs> yeah. You know, now they're doing the self checkout. Like, you know how everything asks for like 10, 15, 18, 20%, 25. Now it's going up to like 30%. And you got to do it. I always got to do it because I got a fucking reputation to uphold. Yeah. And I can't have They'll any stories going out. around like, oh, Jeff Wittick. You know that fucking guy? He came in here one time and left only 10% on the thing. You know, I can't have that going out. So I'm always hitting 18, 20, 25. Right. You know, even if I'm just buying a bottle of water, no work was done. But now the self checkout <laughs> robots are doing. Ad, do you want to add a tip? Like if you go to CVS and fucking, who are you tipping? Well, the robots. The robots need tips. How now? do you know? How do you know what's going on in their lives? I think it's a scam by the government. <clears throat> the CVS fucking evil Illuminati owners. Or the CVS. No, but how do you know what's going on with those robots? You don't know what their what their family life or house life is like. Little baby robots what I'm at saying. home need to eat. Yeah, maybe they have a fucking cheating ass husband or abusive spouse robot spouse. What do you do on those things? Say you're at the gym, you're at Equinox, you get a protein shake, and you're checking out. What are you tipping on that? Do you do you even leave it? I I doubt you leave tip. My tipping is very specific. Unless there's a level of if if there's a level of service involved. Yeah. Like there's an actual human who says hello to you, delivers you a drink, uh, uh, some foods, that kind of thing, like a server, they get twenty mm. percent because yeah. that's how I was born. Like that's how it works. If you make me a coffee at Starbucks, yeah, you get nothing. Oh Zero yeah. Zero fucking dollars. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if like. That's you what made I was me going, a that's what I was coffee, for. bro. You fucking made me a coffee that, by the way, I paid nine dollars <laughs> for. And they're probably and making... it was a dollar drink. I don't care what you what you fucking make. I don't care if you make minimum wage. Do you know what the minimum wage is in in Los Angeles? Do you guys that's have any right fucking there. idea? Twenty dollars. <laughs> Seventeen fucking dollars is the minimum wage in Los Angeles. Seventeen fucking dollars. And you want me to? You want me to tip on top of that? I go to John and Vinny's, my favorite Italian restaurant in yeah. Los Angeles, yeah. where they molest me for fucking price wise. I love John and Vinny. Shout out, shout out, Vinny. I was with him the other day. Great restaurant. They add an eighteen percent surcharge on top of the bill that says this eighteen percent service charge ensures that our our servers and cooks can have a good way of life. Right? Then it says tip. Not included in the 18% we already tapped on. You got put on. on another? Fuck you, bro. Oh. Are you serious right now? You want me to tip another 20%? That's like 50%. Now, That's 40%. like half the bill extra. On top of the fact that you charged me $27 for a fucking piece of pizza? Ooh. Don't you sound like a monkey? Did you hear what I just said, bro? Yeah, no, yeah, but when you say, brought up the restaurant, I, no, when you brought up <laughs> like, the when you brought up a restaurant, I, I thought about this. Uh, there's this Philly cheesesteak place in uh, East Hollywood called like Boss or Bol Boss. You know what I'm talking about? I don't. A Jersey, huh? <laughs> You're no, one it's of my some of the best. Of the the it's some of the best uh, Philly cheesesteaks you've ever had from Jersey. Do, would you want to go Jersey there today food. afterwards? I would love to. I, okay, that's what Mike's talking about. He was telling a story, and then no, no, that is, one I didn't mind. It's a complete was... misdirection into a cheesesteak. We were talking about. <laughs> yeah, now I actually forgot. What because it's some of the best, and like uh, apparently it's like really, really good. Like okay, tipping. for for uh, yeah. for F1 in Vegas this year. No, there's no way. There's no no, 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 no. Okay, it's, 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 it's on the topic. It's okay, on the topic. Sorry, sorry. They're, they're, uh, they're putting like a surcharge on all the bills because like European people don't tip. If they add eighteen to twenty percent to the to the to the receipt, right? Don't have a line for the tip. Don't have the line for the tip. Just say. And I've gone to places that do this. It says an eighteen percent surcharge has been added for your convenience. Done deal. Uh, I, think, I just, I, think I just sugar, sign it. Sugarfish is like that. Easy. I just sign it and I go on with my on with my way. 
but 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 it, the 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 macro picture that I'm trying to paint here for everyone watching this and for you guys as well is everybody has their hand out in this world. I was I I was talking about this before. I was trying to. I was thinking about the amount of money I made over the past four years. When I look at my bank account of what I actually have after I worked every second of my life for the past four years, it's disgusting. <laughs> it is disgusting. You fucking, they take 53% right off the bat. They t Okay, they take 39% federal yeah. they take 13 percent california these cocksuckers in los angeles take one percent los angeles they're the only city besides new york city in the world that has a city fucking income tax Do so they? yes 53 fucking percent of my money goes out the door before i see a fucking dollar of it then steven i save up Not i, Steven's I squirrel i squirrel away <laughs> i squirrel away Off enough grid. listen to me but if I you have a roth ira then you can retire by when you still 50. have to pay taxes on it at the end. <laughs> I don't even know what Roth IRA is. I just heard that. I'll tell you. If anyone actually cares, let me finish oh. this. I squirrel off enough shekels to buy a piece of property. And, and I'm very proud of myself for that. It was a big moment for me. Every single fucking year, I need to pay $54,000 in property taxes just to fucking live in that house. $54,000 teacher salary. Yeah, but look where and you live. You live in Los brother, Angeles. Brother, brother, what I'm saying is this. Then you pay that. Then you then you pay your car insurance. Then you pay your health insurance because even 53% doesn't get you health insurance in this country. So $1,000 a month out the door there. Then you go to fucking John and Vinny's and they add 60% on your bill because they the company doesn't want to pay them. What are we doing all this work for when at the end of the day we have nothing to show for it? What's the fucking point? I'm not, I'm not like, this isn't like a complaint, but it's just sickening. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's sickening. No, it's bungalow, wrong. bungalow in Santa Monica, $80 for two drinks. What? That could be avoided. Just don't go there. Go to, an, <laughs> go to what I'm talking oh, about. I thought you were talking about how expensive I'm, I, And I'm not is. talking about, <laughs> no, I'm not talking about how it pertains to me. I'm talking about how it pertains to all of us, to everybody watching this. Everybody that's watching this has everything in the world against them. There's they, just they, fees they and charges everything. on everything. So everything. We're probably charging you to watch this right now somehow. Yes, I understand what is going on. There's real problems. I get to live this wonderful lifestyle I'm so thankful for and blessed and grateful for. But it's just... I can understand. You just had magnets on your brain because it's all fucked up from this shit. Don't just say fucking say this. this oh yeah, that good. too. Yeah, that's yeah. No, but that was from the heroin too. But I could, but I can assure. I, I'm positive that people watching this understand what I'm talking about. The cards are fucking stacked against you, whether you make thirty thousand dollars a year or you make ten million dollars a year. Yeah. And it's just, it's they're coming to get you. All right, guys, real quick, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's episode. Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. And Prize Picks is so simple that I was able to pick and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. That's 60 seconds. I did it and I forgot about it. And then after the games happened, I forgot they were even happening. I came back to it and I realized how much I had won. I won 500 bones and I didn't even know what happened. It was such a nice surprise to come back to. Look, this makes watching sports so much more fun and prize picks is the best way to play they got quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app this week i'm selecting uh odell Beckham jr for more than 50 yards and josh allen for more than two passing touchdowns so you heard it let's see if i make some money this week baby and prize picks now offers apple pay for quick and easy deposits into your account for this football season with the prize picks reboot policy your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured for nfl games and cfb top 25 matchups if you have a player who exists in the game in the first half and does not return in the second that player is rebooted Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. Go to prizepicks.com slash Jeff now and use code Jeff for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash Jeff. 
and use code Jeff for a first deposit match up to $100. Thank you, Prize Picks, for sponsoring the show. Now let's get back on with it. Lots of good stuff going on in the fight game. It's a crazy time we're living in. Crazy things this year. Lots of upsets. Biggest upsets of all time happened in the past few months. We got our boy Sean O'Malley knocking out Aljo. We got Vulcan Sean Austin. Strickland fucking knocking out Izzy, or not beating Izzy yeah. in that style. He did it impressive. You know, we got fucking Francis Ngannou doing that performance off Tyson Fury. All these crazy things that happened. Yeah, and Volk. It was so crazy to see um, Volk after he lost that fight to Islam, you know, because he's such a strong, tough guy. And he did that press conference after, and he kind of broke down a little bit. He tried to open up about mental health, but he couldn't. It was, like, too hard for him to do because he's so trained to be so tough. But and he like kind of fighter. Did. He kind of, but then he backstepped. No, which but is, he... It's, it's just crazy. Like, listen, so you see how we're so, like, used to it. We're just like, I'll talk about my feelings. I'll talk about my mental health. I'm open to it. I don't care if Andrew Tate makes fun of me. I'll fucking just, I'm going to speak the truth because those people care. And I know how I affect those people. But it's just interesting to see somebody that's been trained to be so tough and show no weakness. Because you're a fighter. You can't show. You get hurt. You can't. You got to keep that poker face on. And that, I think, spills over into his real life when he did his press conference. And he was like, yeah, I'll uh, I do my head in. If I'm not fighting, I do yeah, my head in. Does that keep me busy? Yeah. yeah. And it was just so. And then he like, like was about to tear up. And then he was like, No, nah, I can't. I gotta fucking be tough. You know. No, but he said his. He said a, a, what he needed to say to get the point across. The big one there. Is, he didn't. Every time they asked him, they're like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "I'll do my head in." I do. And they're like, "What does I do my head in mean?" Well, you know? he's Australian. He's got a. Pro he can't speak real words. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. What the fuck? <laughs> Can you, oh, did you get that? Were you actually yeah, able to get okay, that? was captured. He was deep mic. throwing the fucking microphone, taking oh, selfies. Wasn't. Who are you sending that to? Okay, this is. Are actually... you sending that to Elon? <laughs> yo, 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 Patty Pimblet does it. He talks about it a lot. Yeah, he talks about it a lot. It's, it's. You're right. I mean, men have men have been you know systematically trained to not talk about that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And and. I don't I don't talk about it for any reason. I mean the only reason I talk about it is because I want people to I want people to know that that things are going to get better. I've felt at times so hopeless that that things were never going to get better and I I've, I've been in like this like horrible place where I'm just by myself, isolated. You yeah. know what I'm saying with like no with no positive influence and no one telling me like yo things are gonna be all right dude like if you you know do x y and z that's why i talk about it. it's not to complain i don't need anyone's sympathy i don't need anyone's empathy i just want people out there watching the shit no, I, to know that that like it, you know things will get better that a lot of this stuff is is temporary and you need to zone out or zoom out a little bit and really realize that it's it's not a it's not a permanent thing because if you get into that way of thinking that's when you really get in trouble well, yeah, that's that's what I was kind of getting. I was like more complimenting you for the way you're so open about stuff because I didn't realize it until the documentary and I was forced to put that shit out. Like these guys fucking made me tell the story and then I realized how it affected people It helped them. People were hit me up that had similar things like crazy, like same fucking scars and shit and talking to people and then I realized. But it was just interesting to see somebody that's so like famous and just so tough and strong and can get through anything but can't get through that can't get through actually opening up and talking about feelings because we're just trained to be fucking you know tough don't Dude, don't do that and we went through shit that got us past that and once you get past right. it it's like okay i can talk about this like i i had to get past the part where i was okay with talking about it, that i had an addiction problem you know because that showed weakness and i don't want to i don't want to do that at first it took me like a big step to be able to say like I'm addicted to alcohol, that shit has control over me. You know, like I can't control myself with that. And that was like, uh, it's just crazy that you don't think about this stuff that you went through that you're like open with. Well, now. it's just people look at them and think, oh, because they're combat, they're in combat sports and they fight physically for a yeah. living, that they should have less trouble talking about something that doesn't seem as to be as much of a battle as what they Wait, were just. You want to show your dick? Yeah, what's going on over here? Well, I can't. Y'all are ruining okay, no the problem, conversation no by. I'm just doing well, my thing. Doing over here some, you are doing some stuff over there. You're fidgeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Move yeah. to the cord. See, nah. it's not me being distracting. It's just y'all keep going off course and 
and ruin yeah. the Is there any chance? I don't know. Did you have new technology in the studio? Can you do like a replay of what he did for the past 60 seconds? Like, like it's, uh, he's been no. fidgeting. I was waiting for an input. I was, I, was vowels, about to ask about I was about to ask about Jess with him oh, and how he's been. E I A E I O U. That's no, what and, and I'm trying to think of like where to I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting. It's like you're merging in traffic. I'm trying to like wait to like find that spot to merge into the conversation. It's hard. I know. A little bit, yeah. And then my cord got caught on the thing, so I went like that. It somehow that steered the whole conversation. No problem. I it just I, I it's like seeing like uh someone tied up in the corner and they're Dude. you know what I'm saying? Like it's just hard for me to <laughs> What was that? <laughs> like, yeah, just, yeah he, I just hear noises like that. Feuds. Ooh, I, ooh, I, ooh. It's okay, Steven. We love you and I'm happy to have you have you here. Um we interrupt this program for a quick word from our sponsors from Kajabi, a creator commerce platform. One of the biggest challenges I've had as a creator is making enough to earn a living doing what you, what I love. One of the biggest challenges I face as a creator is making enough to support my lifestyle, making enough to live off of this. Kajabi makes it easy to diversify your revenue, build your own brand, and turn your audience into customers. Kajabi is the ultimate all-in-one platform that helps creators and entrepreneurs build successful online businesses by unlocking predictable recurring revenue. They provide a one-stop shop Shop to turn your skills, passions, and experiences into enriching online courses, exclusive membership sites, thriving communities, personalized coaching, subscription podcasts, and more. All of this is underpinned by robust analytics, marketing tools, third-party integrations, and easy payment options. Creators and entrepreneurs value full ownership and control over their brand. With Kajabi, you have 100% autonomy with free customizable templates that you can make your own even if you're not tech savvy, and you keep what you earn. You don't need a huge audience to make sustainable income. There are thousands of creators on Kajabi making six six and seven figures with less than 50K followers. Try Kajabi and join the creators and entrepreneurs who have earned over $6 billion. Right now, Kajabi is offering a 30-day free trial to start your own business if you go to kajabi.com slash Jeff with tech. That's K-A-G-A-B-I dot com slash J-E-F-F-W-I-T-T-E-K. That's kajabi.com slash Jeff Wittick to earn more. Doing what you love. Thank you, Kajabi, for sponsoring the show and doing what you're doing for these creators. I love it. Well, let's get back on with the show. George attacked you on Twitter this week. I oh, spoke yeah. to him on the phone after. <laughs> what are your thoughts? Do you think you deserve that? What? You posted a TikTok saying like, oh, I'm proud of you, George. You're my boy for life or something. Oh. And then he was like, yo, Mike, stop fucking saying shit about I me, dog. Had George we ain't that. friends. What is we the truth? Come on. What are behind closed doors? Friends. What's fucking. going on? And then you you responded and then you deleted the tweet after or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. I always delete tweets. Yeah. It's my favorite activity. Did you, ex were you shocked? Were you, did you get a little nervous when you saw George come at you like that? Did you get a little fucking butterflies in your stomach? Did your heart start racing? Well, did you say that about him to have a good image on the internet and behind closed doors yeah. is really not like that. Was and that's why fake? he responded with that. Was it genuine, that TikTok? Ooh. Did you even post it or did you have one of your assistants cut it up and throw it up there for you? Did you not even know that it went up? That's it. Oh, for real? <laughs> what do you, I don't use my TikTok. That's what they chose to yeah, post? Yeah, bro, they just post anything. a solo clip? Well, it's got almost a million views on it now. Yeah, because all the hate on it. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, there was positive? No, it's just comments. Yeah. There's no hate or... Like George's back. There's no hate or... Well, so what is your... I don't have it. I have hypothesis? No I look at it the same way as the... I don't have a feeling, any thoughts. You gonna send a message to him now? I don't know what to say about it. I, I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely on that podcast that I was on, that I'm 22, just made a statement about being proud of him, his show doing really well, him having great guests on. I, I didn't say we're still friends. I didn't say any of that. I just, yeah. I, and that really is deep down in my heart how I feel. Yeah. So I put that out. I say that, and that was the response. I don't know what to say. I texted him too yeah. right after I saw the tweet, and I was like, "Bro, we, I, I've texted you multiple times to talk about this. I'd love to talk to you about this. We used to be very good friends. Like, I still would love to talk." He actually said on the in the tweet, like, "If you want to come on my show to talk about it, I would happily go on his show to do talk that." About it. You want me to go with I, you? No, I don't want you to go with I'll me. I'll go with you guys. Hey, George, so <laughs> I'm very excited to finally get a chance to talk about this. So did you see what Francis Naganu said about the <laughs> Cybertruck? Hey, let's talk about that. No, I don't what want you to come. Do. No, I don't want you he to come. He can show George's I dick right no, before you guys get into and to, this. And to be completely honest with you, because of my, my current approach to all this, I would love to just meet him and talk to him off camera. <laughs> like a real human shit. Like, yo, let's just talk about what happened. What a why waste. We, why that does it have be, to be content? It's content. Why don't, why don't we talk first? Why don't we talk first about what happened, then make a piece of content where we're friendly and everything's good and we go and 
play football together or or talk about Euphoria season Passable three. Pigskin. It doesn't. Why, why does it have to be televised? Yeah. Yeah. Because it sells. I'm just so to, to take this out of the scenario, like th- this portion of it out of it. I'm I I may not be perfect at it, Oscar. But what you just said, I'm really, really trying to remove myself from. I, I, dude, the the pursuit of wealth, and by way of that, just viewership, which leads to wealth, is the killer of creativity and art. It is the it is yeah. the killer. Remember what? Remember the terminology? Oh, he sold out. Mm-hmm. Everybody sold out. And yeah. I actually will compliment you and say you have some. You have some. Uh, opportunities to do shit that would be like easy wins that you don't do because you like to stick a little bit closer to your format, which I will, I will applaud that. Um, what do you mean by that? Like what? I don't know. I just, I just feel like you like to, you know, I don't want to get views. Yeah. I like, like being when under, you say I that. like being underground. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you, for the most part kind of just do what you want, but mm-hmm. I, but, and I've started to, to skew back towards first and foremost, I'll say this. I, I never really was one for drama. I've always tried to de-escalate conflict. When people try to come at me, I never, I never turn it into a, some of the beefs that I've avoided could have been career bl- explosions for me. I could have, I could have taken yeah. it to the fucking moon. Tate's come at me. Logan's come at me. Mm. The amount, dude, I could have had massive, massive Doing, yeah. beefs that led to like Trisha Paytas style shows where it's just this that happened, then that happened, then he did this. I hate conflict. I think it, I think it leads to just nothingness. It's, it's stupid. It, I'd rather I'd rather fix conflict off camera and then create something meaningful. That's just what. That's just how. Yeah, that's I not am. what the people want. No, I know want, that, but I don't. But I swear to you, Jeffrey, I finally am coming to a point where I don't care. I don't care anymore. I want to create what I want to. I, I like I said, I made a vlog where I went and taste tested Belgian waffles. Two weeks ago, I put out one where I went to a food festival uh, or, or you know, I'm going to do one this week where somebody gets flown out to date my assistant. Like just random stupid stuff that I want to do. I don't want to fucking fight with Jack Doherty's security guard. Well, Who bro, would that's, want to that's, do that? That's the best content. People see, they see that no, you're having fun. No, less people want to watch it. Well, no, no, no. The people, no, that, people, people see you're having it. fun doing it and it will be better. You know, it will a be prime better example if you enjoy doing it. What so. you're explaining, or well, the opposite of what you're explaining, Rick Rubin. Very genuine Trans- what he does. Doesn't you know he doesn't even keep any of meditational. He doesn't yes. keep any of his records in his home. He just ships them to his mom's house because he thinks that it's too. It's like a distraction and it's. Yeah, he's it's like the, he's Rick Rubin is the legend, epitome of doing a what he legendary loves. Legendary music producer that has created some of the greatest sounds in the history of of music. And not because and, he hasn't sold and not out. because of money and not because of the fame. It because he genuinely enjoys. Now it. I will say this counter that. It's almost a little bit. It almost is a little bit discounted when your pursuit of the art, I don't want to say this because it's kind of weird, but like then leads to extreme wealth because then you can just keep doing what you love doing anyways. You were never tested. Does that make sense? Like I'm talking about the artists that are out there making $152 a month doing what they love. And somebody's like, yo, you know, you could do this for Nike, right? And they'll pay you $150,000 a year. And they're like, fuck that shit. I ain't selling out, man. And they, they just keep spray painting walls yeah, like or, or doing no murals for the local coffee shop. Cause nobody's going to tell them what to do. I respect those people. I'm envious of those people. They're stronger than me. I started doing, I became viewership focused. You know, that's just like anybody fucking else on this platform. Anybody who says that they're 100% passion focused, with the exception of very few on YouTube, is a lie. Would be a liar. That's just not the fact of the matter. Some people are more passion focused, or a little bit more passion focused. But to say that there's some, you know, artistic person out there who's not focused on viewership on this platform, that would be that would be untrue. Yeah. Who is it? Uh, me. I'm the only one. I'm the only I, I'm, so once again, I'm, I said you a little bit. I, you definitely clicked. I'm the only you real definitely. fucking one in this game right here. That's right. Everybody fell. One. Everybody else fell off except. Yeah, me. Everybody fell off with me. But do you understand what I'm saying? Like 100%. just from, from a just like adverseness to conflict and just it's it goes also to that like fence sitting thing. It's not always fence sitting. I just sometimes just avoid shit because I don't want to fight. I don't want to argue with people. Yeah. I think your main issue all stems back to just Twitter. Just stay off Twitter. You'll be fine. You'll be way happier. Yeah. Kyle sent me something the other day that actually made me happy. It was, it was I mean, it's, it's not that big a deal, but Andrew Schultz, he's one of our friends. I love him. Now, you know, you introduced me over there in, in uh, London at the fight or whatever. Manchester. Yeah. Manchester. And um, he just turned 40. Yeah. And I like to look at, like, it's hard to find people that I'd be, like, happy with a career like theirs. You know, and Andrew's doing, we went to a show. It was a great show. He's Amazing. touring the world. Yep. 
uh, he's married now. He's going to have a family. He's going to have kids and stuff. I'm guessing. So that's pretty cool. You know, he's doing it at 40. And it's like his life has been set up really nice for himself. Like he grinded and then he's like, was like a slow build, slow build. And then he reached it. Like, it, and now he's like kind of steady going, you know, I like that. And that was like, that's seven years from now for me, you know? So I, I feel like that's something positive to look at. Like we're not so lost, you know? No, no, it, no, we're not. No. Like the clock sometimes feels like it's ticking for it's me. Not, Cause I'm like, holy not. shit. I'm in my thirties. Like I got to fucking have a family or I'm going to be a loser for the rest of my life. It's it, like it, 10 years ago. He was on like guy code. Yeah. On MTV. So we're killing it. We're on the right track. What do you think the easiest way for me to reset my mental state is? Uh, it's not magnets. It's not the gym. It's Yosemite. It's not. I love Yosemite. It's Ooh, not that. Park City, Utah. It's not that. It's to wake up in the morning, walk into my sp sprawling home that I have to pay that those taxes on every year, mm -hmm. and say to myself, "How many board ages? Ten, ten years ago, or just over, you know, thirteen years ago." I was living in a, in a, 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 a attic of my grandfather's house smoking crack, addicted to drugs with yeah. absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Mm -hmm. Just about to go into rehab for 40 days, 400 credit score, completely bankrupt, you know, a felon. And I look at my life now after, after you know, this incredible journey and I, and that's the story. That's that's the epitome of the story that the people that do care about my my journey relate to, because they may feel like I did. And if you can look and just say to yourself, "Yo, it's not too late." Think about all the Is cool stories correct? you're gonna be able to tell your grandkids. You know, bro. I've, I mean, so many. So fun. many. Yeah, I, I have a really question because like ten years ago, I'm sure that you didn't have like the money that you have now. Have you taken the time to think of what you enjoy to do? Like not like work wise, like for yourself. Right now, I'm just trying to 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 get into a better state of mind. Because I, 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 transparently, I'm not just saying this. For, it's never for sympathy or, or of any kind. I just really don't enjoy much. I'm not. I, I just haven't really been able to find enjoyment much. I, I am, am really working on that and trying to do some stuff with my brain and try to fix my my mindset a little bit to find that enjoyment. I think we fucked our brains by getting so high. Well, I did know? a lot of drugs. Like I got to say nothing's that. Nothing's going to feel as good. <laughs> it's, you say it as a joke, but it's, it's very true. true. It's yeah, true. we reached some highs. Well, you know? but, but they're all... And we were losers at the time. But yeah, <clears throat> that, that, you know, feeling fucking good artificially, it fucked us up a little bit. So you got to learn to like re-appreciate shit. And that's, yes. what, that's what we... Are all working on. That's what I'm, that that's that was eloquent, eloquently put, Jeff. I like that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to restructure because because this it's all just a journey. Like you're just working on stuff. Every day is a part of your 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 you one know. day at a time. You know, yeah. if you if you look at shit like where I'm at now and compare yourself to other people, yeah, it could be like you're fucking light years behind. But if you just set goals from now, like today, and then give yourself a date in the future that are like somewhat fucking accessible anything you could fix it anything can happen look at fucking francis ngano he just beat the fucking heavyweight or almost beat the heavyweight champion I mean, technically in a him. different sport yeah that's like me just saying i'm gonna fucking play lebron james in six months and i'm gonna smoke him in a one-on-one -on -one. it's insane like you could get shit done if you really stick to it you make it like it's all or nothing get richard die trying i'm gonna fucking do this you're gonna make it happen yeah it's, and I kind of lost i kind of lost that and i that's another thing i've been trying to re-pick up is that mentality <laughs> because the, the good thing that a lot of people watching this have going for them is that back against the wall scenario because that desperation breeds such greatness. There's nothing that makes you create greatness out of nothing like having to do it. Comfort, mm -hmm. com finding comfort in life, which is which is everyone's general pursuit in this life and you know comfort, peace of mind, happiness, all those things. They are great and they are a great goal to, to want to achieve, but they're generally generally counterproductive to uh, massive increases in success and, and productivity. Yeah. Because the thing that makes you produce is because you have to. Yo, I yo, I have to go to court tomorrow. I have no money to pay for my lawyer. Mm. I, I'm up against the wall. They're trying to put me in prison. I need to change my life. I need to change my life today. I have to. Yeah. But when you're creating semi-stale YouTube content and the check keeps coming in and the house is paid for and all You're this stuff. Maintain. You can very simply, you can very easily fall into a pattern that is super counterproductive to your overall goals in life. And that's why you always need to evolve and you always need to reassess what your real goals are. And I thought my goals were to be a big YouTuber and get all these views. 
but my real goals are to make impact and to help people and to get, and I try to do that a lot, but I want to do it more. And that's, that's yeah. Oscar to your question. That's one of the things that I really want to start working on more. That's nice. I'm happy you asked that question, Oscar. Yeah, it was good. Uh, we, uh, we all made a goal list at the beginning of this year and obviously a lot of shit happened that got real rocky and this fucking, we like, we could have never expected any of it to happen, but all that bad shit that happened brought us all back together fucking this place getting hit with a flood rebuild the set yeah like re uh fixed our relationship oscar and i steven and i were going at it ready to fucking kill each other you know we, we fought it out in the octagon you know we've been through a lot but at the beginning of this year we made a goal list and i'm almost done with that fucking list which makes me feel really good yeah. and it's all the best feeling of like happiness it's not money it's just like feeling productive and if you go one day where you work super hard and you accomplish a bunch of shit you'll feel really good and then the next day you don't do shit you feel like a loser again so that's just how it's going to go you got to constantly be working to something the last thing i got on my list is this new york city marathon and then a product launch or for this year we're putting out a couple new things that's like this new bag here um, and the hair oil. So that we put out. We're fucking, we got everything done. We accomplished it all this year. We worked hard. We'll go on a nice company vacation, all of us, huh? What do you say? Yeah. We'll fucking go out on a nice trip and bond. And no, no filming. Or we'll film it. We'll film it. But yeah, and everything's been thrown at me for this race. Fucking got bronchitis. I have bronchitis, a lung fucking. Uh, it's it's compromising my lungs. The one thing you need for a distance race like a marathon, and it hits me the week of the marathon. Are you kidding me? It hit you like a Honda like a Honda Civic. <laughs> so did you finish right the marathon? The okay. What did you ask? What did you just ask? What did you just ask? Were you able to finish it? <laughs> yeah, he did. I, sometimes I want to fucking strangle you. Sometimes I just want to come over and pet you, and just you know, you are my which, little. Which scenario is it right now? Strangle. It's not. It's, I've been oh, talking saying, about the whole. Just saying, weekend, I would. Steven. I would love to see Steven Did you, interact. The whole thing with I just said Jack's was building up the last guard. thing I have to do. Yeah, I want. I'm gonna get Jack's security guard to come fucking punch you in the <laughs> fucking head. Make it worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the race is this weekend. I'm sure I will have finished it by the oh. time this episode comes out. So maybe you're right. That was a good question. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, I yeah, have. Wait, was Steven just ahead. too smart for all of us? <laughs> I did it. I yeah, Steven, you're right. Yeah, Steven. I guess I have at this moment right now. I guess I have. <laughs> well, if, good job. if God keeps throwing, if the running gods keep throwing these obstacles at me, like, I don't give a fuck if I have to wheelchair across that finish line. I'm getting this race done with no lungs, one lung. If I have to breathe through a fucking straw the whole time. I like David Goggins. <laughs> yeah, I'm the new David Goggins. That's I'm taking his place because people get old and they get replaced by the new guys coming up. That's me. I'm the new David Goggins. You don't Yo, know me, son. He was son. second place, You don't know son. me, son. Huh? He was second place in that race, son. What was he? Yeah, that, that yeah. like 300 what? mile one or like 200. Oh, mile and like one. an ultra, he got beat by Eli Weeby. Oh, was that? But he's not. He doesn't pride himself on being the fastest. He just says like he'll get shit done. He's not gonna quit. God. No, he said that he he almost quit. Like he went to a porta potty and like basically like was about to give up. He was gonna break his leg. Just on to purpose? Say, yeah, just to say like <laughs> just to have that be the excuse. Yeah. For him, like not to finish oh, it. Oh, so he was losing it. Yeah, and then like uh, he he basically mm -hmm. uh, talked himself into it, and then play second. That has the crazy. epiphany of me mental toughness. Yeah, uh, yeah. What'd you call it? The epiphany. Epitome. Epi epiphany. How do you spell that? What are, what's the know. proper terminology on that? Can epitome was good. Though. Epitome. Epiphany. Oh, okay. Epitome. Hmm. Yeah, he's fucking. I wouldn't want to hang out with him though, David Goggins. He just clown you the whole time. It's just I'll too much. Fucking it's outrun too much. him. Like he doesn't have fun. I'll outrun David like. Goggins. Mm -hmm. no. You're right. I won't. No, it's not gonna happen. Like, can we just kick it and go on TikTok? I don't have like... that type of mental toughness when it gets down to that point. What's like, your far? What's your longest run? Well, so I far? do. My longest run has been a marathon, 26. I never. Wait. Did. Oh, what? actually, I did 27 <laughs> and a half because I had to. Wait, wait. You've I gone ran the back marathon? to get my friend. I did the LA marathon. Oh, I told Casey this was your first one. I've told Casey that it's not my first one. He didn't listen. He wasn't paying attention to me, huh? No. He's got a lot of stuff going on. He really does. He really stuff. does. He's got a lot going on. I think his yeah. head is vibrating in there. And no, Magnus. he's got a, he's got a good family. I think family balances you out. I think that's what we got to get to, and that'll. But we talk about this enough. So yeah, Casey, I'll be. I'm not racing him. Casey's a lot. He runs at a faster pace than me, which I'm. I run a lot. And I talk about running a lot. I should be fast. I should be up there in the, in the front of the pack with the Ethiopians and fucking hitting two hours on this race with the amount I talk about running, but. Uh, my lungs are compromised, so I'm just gonna go out there, have fun, and just do my best and finish it, get it done, get the medal. Steven, that's a video idea. 
Go run the marathon with them. Yeah, do it as a race bandit. The people that aren't registered and they just it's, they're called race bandits. It's gangsters. Do I get the medal? Can run illegally. It's only one reason why I want to do it. It's for the medal. We could just buy you one of those. No, you can't. <laughs> we could just buy. I'm like sure a, you a can. But nobody's gonna sell their medal after they did that. No, I'm sure somebody. Cody. I'm sure somebody, well, Cody. Someone dies and they're like, uh, no, but I'm sure somebody's down and out after the race. Padrino Cody. He'll probably sell you his. He's doing the race. <clears throat> no, he's not. Yeah, he is. No, he got in through some a loophole. It's tough to register the New travel, York Marathon. Travel. He maybe threw his connections that travel more for the last. I think so. Wait, so not yeah. anyone can just sign up? What do you? No, it's not everyone fine. can just sign up. You, you can for most marathons, but the New York City Marathon is just one the of the most one? famous marathons. Yeah, it probably is the most famous marathon. It's and like the parade on Thanksgiving. It is. They <laughs> shut down the whole city. It goes through all five boroughs. It's a huge event. People come out there and they like they get all emotional. New York just all comes together. I was talking to Andrew Schultz's boy after the after the show. Mike, is it? No, the Mark? the one with the curly hair. Mark. Uh, Mark. Mark. I was talking to Mark. Yeah. I was telling him I'm doing the New York Marathon. He's like, he's like, oh shit, man. Yeah, I go every year. And I was like, you run? And he's like, no, I just go there for the energy. It's like so. You <laughs> he's know, like me. It's so like emotional, and I, I like I'll tear up. I'll like cry from it, and I'm like, in my head like. He's funny. He's really funny. The fuck you fucking go there and cry? Well, I guess, I guess, uh, you know, it's a nice thing. You know, it, it is. You do get that good feeling of like, you know, everybody, the unity, everybody comes together and it's for a good cause. They're they're raising money. They're doing healthy shit. You know, it's not just like you're out at a rave and everybody's doing fucking drugs. Or beating security guards, beating people Beating up. people. Yeah. Doing fucking sex crimes and shit. No, I feel like just it going all out comes there. down to that now is that story. That story, you know how many views that TikTok, uh, Twitter post I put out got on it? Like 35 million views. Of the punch? Yeah, but I just wrote a couple sentences about it, and that got 35 million views. So I get the money. Do you? Yeah. You make money from Twitter? Yeah. Okay, well, I guess it pays for Elon your magnet therapy that it sends it. No, sends insur it my insurance is paying for that. You, nice. know what I have on, you know what I have on Friday when this comes out? A colonoscopy. That's... Brutal. That's something I stress. A uh, colonoscopy, Jeff, and on the same exact, at the same time, an endoscopy. They're doing the top down and the bottom up. Oof. Why do they have, to, is that when you turn 40 you have to do that? That's not what mine is. Mine is because I have a gastro problem. So you have to do it before you turn 40. Yeah, normally it would be Wait, 40. Is like a camera or a vacuum? Camera. Oh. And a vacuum. But that's just a thing for men, right? When you hit 40, you got to yeah, get for shit prostate. up your ass. Yeah. They got to check your ass. Yeah. All right, guys, clip this and then go ask Mike if he's feeling all right after the episode goes up. They send a camera up your Oh, ass. yeah. They're going to put it in your vlog with the film? Yes. No, I don't, I ha I don't have a vlog planned right now. Is this it a, a girl doctor or no, a guy? Do you dude. care? Is this your second time doing it? Which question should I answer? Would you prefer a male or a female doctor for this? I still, I still haven't. I still, I would prefer to have a male doctor. Kind of, yeah. I, is I that agree. A, no, I agree. Is that sexist? I would do it, it just because I don't want uh, like a girl like ah oh, my in my ass. I just fucking. Oh, that's it. Like, not what I was saying. I, don't want I was it, like, saying medically, it. just let's just keep this straight business, doc. Uh -huh. Go up there, do what you got to do. What about when you have to do a physical and show me your pee pee? Uh, boy or girl? I get boy. I was too you, scary. Uh, do you do that as an adult? I haven't shown my dick to a doctor in a while. Yeah, yeah, you're supposed to. Maybe. Yeah, you're, yeah, you should do that. Hey, you should mind check your then. testicles, or just show your dick to to some anyone. Yeah. All right. I guess so. I guess go fucking go do that soon. Because, yeah. yeah, they should do that. They got to squeeze your dick to make sure there's no cancer. No, it's yeah. the nuts. Yeah, nuts, I mean, yeah. Well, the nuts, I, I understand. But why do you got to show the doctors your dick? That was always well, weird. How do you show, you well, well, how do you show them your nuts without showing them your... Bad. Did you I used to get nervous that that would happen? No, but I just can't imagine. Like, you think that's ever happened? That well, I to. used to... My mom would take me. So, like, how awkward that would that be oh. if you fucking, you know... Pop one, right one. What about Steven? He has big ass nuts. And that blue chew you just took? Like if you had to go see the doctor now and you're with your mom? Oh, no. Steven, what the hell? Why oh, do you have such a large boner? <laughs> Steven, your dick was no. never this big. I remember when I had you as a baby, it was the size of a bottle cap. Now it's the size of a microphone. Steven, no. Steven, have you been taking blue chew instead of feud? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my penis was like inverted since the age of like eight. That used to happen to me yeah, when I was. button. That used to happen to me with I'm coke. I'm just kidding. That That's not no. true. That's not true. That used to happen to me with coke. I used to hump my spine. Like if I sniffed enough, coke. if I sniffed enough coke, my dick would go inside me. Ugh. Oh yeah. Not like really, but it would get so like because you're so high anxiety. Sucks it up. I, I think some fat guys, it'll get sucked up into their meat, into their uh, pouch, into a meat grinder. Pouch. Pouch. Poopa. Poopa, yeah. 
Oh yeah, there's some dudes that haven't seen their dick in ages. It is, yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah. What do you? How do you guys sleep? This would be maybe be the last question of the show. I posted about this on Instagram last night. Very interesting conversation. Oh. Oh, yeah. Millions and millions of people know. responded, including Biden, other people. How do you sleep? Well, I sleep in like underwear or boxers because I don't like my nuts sticking to my legs. So just so night. just boxers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. Yeah, no just socks. boxers. Just boxers. Sometimes t-shirt. Oh. Sometimes t-shirt. Oh, I I saw that. I sleep with socks on. Oscar, I just think that that I just think that the likelihood of you of you being a serial killer if you sleep with socks is higher. I, I I'm throwing Who that stuff. Oscar does. Of course he does. I I'm <laughs> throwing that out there. I believe that if they did a study that they're that Dahmer and people like that 100% wore socks to bed. Why do you do that? I, I don't know. I just. Feels comfortable. That, it, it makes. Do you want to know what? Do you want to know what wearing socks to bed is the equivalent of me to me? Someone saying you have to spend the next six months in Rikers. Yeah, it's like being in prison. Or or someone saying how long can you sleep inside this coffin underground? I don't okay, know what's about worse that. That's, that's, very that's similar. Now. Very similar. Yeah, like, Imagine well, having uh, hot socks on, right? Like socks, then a blanket over it. Yeah, but what's worse? Yeah, so oh, dude, I sleep socks? without the blanket. I so, get too hot. So where? So your feet just pop out the end. Oh, that's kind of nice. No, or not, you have no blanket end. at all. No, like I just like have the blanket on the side. Like if I get cold, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it on. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. So that's explain ridiculous. this scenario one more time. So you you're wearing what up top? A shirt. A shirt. Boxers. Boxers and socks. Socks. No blanket. No blanket. That's ridiculous. We got to bring that white cracker back in here. Yo, dude, Oscar, that's <laughs> that, Oscar, that's that's. Wait, Mike, do you wear socks when you're camping? Okay, okay. Let's put it like this. There's like, you know how there's like polar opposites. Like if I'm walking, I'm not laying down. If I'm flying in a plane, yeah, I'm not in a, a boat. Plane, are you wearing socks? I'm yeah, not in right? a boat. If I have socks on, I am not sleeping. Th those two can never, it doesn't matter what world those two things come together in. It can't happen. Space time in my world would rip So you take your socks open. off on a plane? Dude, if I want to sleep, dude, yeah, dude, dude, come on. Just okay. uh, for, for me, plane. for me, I just feel like I'm too aware of my toes like wiggling, like if I don't have socks on, and that makes me like not sleep. That's what, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, look, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> that was the funniest thing. Fear of your toes wiggling? <laughs> no, it's just like a sensory thing, like, Ugh. like, cause, like, because I move my feet a lot, and I feel like, like, uh. I don't know, like the like, air. Like, also, like I get sweaty because I get hot, so like I feel like. Uh, so you get clammy. hot and sweaty, so you put socks on. Dude, you might no, have foot I get, fungus. I feel, I feel like clammy. Oh, clammy! Well. Yeah, like I, I feel like clammy. So the like, way you just dude. described it was you have a fear that someone's gonna come play <laughs> this little piggy while you're sleeping. On your toes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a. <t> <laughs> that's <laughs> some serious <laughs> trauma. Maybe that stems back from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone, someone did something with your toes, bro. Wait, the only but, one, the only one we haven't heard yet is <laughs> Tom Hanks in Philadelphia. Kyle? Oh, no, I do boxers and whatever the night is. I'll wear a shirt, but I do sleep in the recovery position. It's so comfortable. Fetal, right side? Yeah, on the right That's side. pretty, I mean, dude, that's that's fine. That's I'm on my side, too. But so yeah, yeah. so as the last one to talk here, I, I, I very infamously sleep completely naked, and I have for some time. Do you? I just really like being naked. Like I'm a very liberal person. Like I just really enjoy being naked. Like you can, you can relate, obviously. But you do it for jokes. I just feel very comfortable when I'm sleeping naked on nice sheets with a nice blanket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just feels nice to me. Like, whenever I then, the thing is, is once you what start. What if you got some, Ooh, when you some wake up in the morning, marks coming out and of you your wake ass. Up, that just doesn't oh, happen. Do you want to know Do you want to know something about that? You're, these are all very relatable questions. I'm happy you asked that. Shit all my, over bed. My butthole. <laughs> my just... butthole <laughs> remains. 100% spotless at all times. If I if I poop at any point during a day, I'll go home and shower. Yeah. I my what? butthole is spotless. I go to bed with a spotless butthole, I wake up with a spotless butthole 24/7. Yeah, yeah, yes, I was going to say that. I don't. Life changing. No, oh, I just wow. go in the shower. What? I just go in the shower and I get in there what? with like soap. Like I yeah. really like I go <laughs> Really, like, get in there and clean that fucker out. Dude. Yes, but bidet's like. Why do we have a naked video of Mike? <laughs> how do we have this, and how is it? I just don't so even mind. Just don't even mind that. That doesn't bother me. I've always been, look at that tan line around the ass. <laughs> That's like Wait, Kyle that? right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kyle, you and Kyle are the same underneath. Back to what you're saying about the the, the new socks thing, right? Listen to this, ready? Would you rather for the rest of your life sleep with socks on, 
every single night or sleep with jeans on. Ooh. I just I it, Tight the, jeans. the, 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 quest, jeans, the question seems like it would have a very obvious answer being the socks, but I will not roll back on my answer that yeah, I believe that socks make you make you more. You would rather sleep with jeans on I would sleep every jeans single on. Yep. night. Very tight, tight jeans. jeans that, yep, I don't care. It's hard to I will not on. cover my feet. If oh. my feet are covered, because basically what you're asking me is, would you rather wear jeans or never sleep again? And then the jeans That's the question. When you just, it doesn't over, matter. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter if you ask me, would you rather sleep? Well, a guy d- drives over you with one of those steamrollers. You know the steamrollers that just flatten everything under it yeah. or wear socks to bed. I only have one answer to that. It would be the steamroller, bro. I can't wear socks to bed. It's not an option. Let's let me ask you a serious question. Uh, all jokes aside, um have you noticed a drop in your nut sack? Like have they stretched <laughs> yeah, out? Yeah, but not like crazy. But you've noticed a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Cuz my dad made a joke to me he was like saying that your nuts are gonna be fucking dragging on the yeah. floor or something and i'm like what that's real that you never saw happens? you never saw fucking uh big daddy where he goes and visits oh, his girlfriend yeah. at the end and she's with the old guy and he goes and he goes are... old saggy balls in here oh his were sagging his old ridiculously saggy low balls. though but so that happens you actually yes wait you can get that low not that low. It doesn't oh. touch the floor, but like they, yeah, they drop down. Like when you're a kid, like when you're born, your nuts are basically in your body. Like Steven's nuts are probably still in his stomach. No, Steven's got a nut sack on him. Oh yeah. Actually, I've seen it so many times. Oh, that, because of the proportion of the. Uh, that's some fucking. Nut sack you got yeah. there. Kids got some fucking <laughs> cojones. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You have like a disproportionate <laughs> dick to ball ratio. Well, it was nice to get the boys back for an all-male episode of Jeff FM. Sorry, Mike, if we broke your balls a little too much this My episode. Old saggy balls. Your old saggy no, you, sack. You, no, you, you know? didn't break them. I'm just, I'm just, I'm transitioning. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. I'm happy for <laughs> no, you. No, no, no. I really mean that. I, I, outside of becoming a woman, I didn't, don't mean it like that. I, I, I'm just in an evolutionary period, and I, it's uncomfortable. And I hope you mean that. Well, I was trying to end off on You're in a transitionary period. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, No, I was just trying to end off on a more positive note. But Thanks uh, for having me on the show. I love this show. I love being here. I love the audience. One of the most creative, dedicated, versatile audiences. They'll listen to anything as long as it's got us on. I mean, these people are as loyal as hell. So I'm always happy to be back here on Jeff FM. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, we will be back next week with a medal. I'll be wearing a medal because oh, yeah. I'm going to get luck. this fucking race done. Yeah, best of luck, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks for the support, everybody. Just hit that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah, that's my impression of Logan. Hit that subscribe. Smash that.